Welcome to Dr. Kush's Exotic Drinks. I'm, of course, Dr. Kush, along with my bar back, Kyle. I'm not a real doctor, but I did spend almost two decades running some of LA's best bars. After years of teaching classes and training bartenders, I want to demystify the cocktail world for you. Let's try a few new things as I open up my bar to everybody. Belly up, chat, let's have a drink. All right, everybody, welcome to Dr. Kush's Exotic Drinks. I am Dr. Kush. We are here on a Thursday to celebrate the fine art of Thirsty Thursday. One of the one of the finer arts that we have. I feel like that should be a major in most colleges. Thirsty Thursday. And to be very honest, I think it might be. We are going to be making a classic cocktail from the 1920s tonight. Big time. Lots of fun details about this cocktail. Lots of good stuff going on with this cocktail. Very simple, very easy, and oh, one second. I was just yelled at by my bar back. One second. Let me get these guys going here. There we go. Lanterns are on now. <clears throat> a very simple, a very easy cocktail to make. You do not need a lot of stuff, but the stuff that you need is important. All right. The ingredients are important. So you can't just uh, you can't just go out and buy the crappy ingredients and expect this cocktail to turn out well. It there's a good chance. Uh uh. No, thank you. Uh it is called the monkey gland. Why is it called the monkey gland? You guys know the drill, right? I'll tell you about it right after I say hello to everybody. But before I say hello to everybody, something very new and exciting in the bar. Now, I have been doing this now for four or something years. And I'll be honest, I don't watch a ton of other content creators that make drink content. I really, at this point, you know, like magicians don't really go to other magic shows. I'm not calling myself a magician by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but you know, at some point you're like, oh yeah, no, I, I get what you're doing. I have to find sort of my, I have to forge my own way in this industry. So I can't just go watch other people and copy what they're doing, right? That just doesn't make any sense. I have to be me in this. I got to be Dr. Kush. Otherwise, listen, uh, there are a lot of other great content creators that have very deep timbers, that have very beautiful shots, and that will uh, lull you into feeling that the way that you drink is just fine. I'm not like that. I'm going to yell at you. I'm going to scream and shout. I'm going to wave my hands like this constantly. However, I have noticed now that I've been watching a few more of them that there is something that most, let's say, well-watched and well-liked content creators have that I don't until today. I do a live show. And I direct my own live show. I direct it, you guys know, with my feet. Obviously, I have this wonderful shot. This shows you the whole bar. It gets you all the way from here, all the way over there. It's got a really a kind of a fun shot. I also, in case we need to get closer to me, I have this shot. This is a very nice shot. Look, I, I put something right here. Look how beautiful that is. It's nice and close. You guys can see what's going on. You can see how my hands are working. That's a fun shot. I got this shot. This shot that I can sort of bring in to show you close stuff. We sometimes call it blender cam. Sometimes we call it garnish cam. So we call it all kinds of stuff. <sighs> there is a shot that other content creators have that I don't. It's that really crisp, beautiful, close-up shot of liquid Draw, like falling into the glass. It's that beauty shot that's well lit. It has, it's called bouquet behind it. You know where it's kind of uh, fuzzy behind it. It has that shot. I didn't have that shot until today. May, let me introduce you now to our brand new shot on Dr. Kush's exotic drinks. There is a camera right here. You can't even see it. It's behind all this stuff. It's a whole camera right here. And look at this shot. Oh my gosh. Can you even imagine if I'm pouring something in and it's just glug, 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 glug. Oh, gorgeous. So just be prepared, guys. We now have a, a brand new shot. Let me just, uh, just if I can, sort of show you what we got here. If we just uh, throw one of those and spin it. I mean, please. This 
right here, this is the shot. Thank you. Let me just say thank you to uh, the UF Mark. It's glorious. Think of the possibilities. The possibilities are this, UF Mark. We can get closer. We can get closer, and we're in focus, and we look really good, and that's it. So now I have a shot. So now we have four shots. I'll remind you. We have this one. We have this one. We have this one. And we got this one. Hey, guys, it's me. It's me, Kush. Pretty excited about that shot. Anyway, maybe you guys aren't ex as excited, and that's fine. It's not up to you to be excited about that shot. It's up to me to be excited about that shot and use it in ways that will enhance the show. So that's what we got going on. Before we get too deep into this cocktail called the monkey gland, let's... Say hello to everybody that's here. First of all, let me say hello to Shawnee Panda Baker, Shawnee Panda Baker, and Tiki Tom Hubbard. We're the first two in line tonight, and Tiki Tom has brought us a problem, and I think I can solve it. I don't think I can solve it. I can at least explain it. Tiki Tom is concerned that people are putting uh, oranges, and I assume, uh, Tiki Tom, muddled cherries into your cocktail. Well, you have one place to blame for that. It's, apparently people think it's a nice town. I, I don't know much about it. I've been there like two or three times it's called Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin has their own form of a old fashioned. And in that old fashioned, they muddle oranges and they muddle cherries. And usually they don't even use whiskey in their old fashions. Instead, they use brandy. If we need to find a way to get rid of muddled oranges in our old fashions, there's a good chance that we're just going to have to sell Madison, Wisconsin to Canada. Now, I don't make the rules, and I don't know how possible this is, but if you can, start writing your representatives about selling Madison, Wisconsin to Canada. I think they'll do very well up there. I think the Canadians will like the Madison Old Fashioned, and I think us Americans can get back to drinking uh, normal old fashions. Uh, that's my thought. I don't like to get political, but that's one of the political stances that I take. DC Debbie Clark uh, is turning off the December. It's one of my very favorite bands. Uh, the uh, their their album that was called the. I listen to it all the time. The, uh, uh, the I'll sing some too, real quick. Columbine, Columbine, please release this heart of mine. Love that album. December's are great. Well, I honestly, hopefully. Then DCW Clark, I can beat the Decemberists. It's going to be tough. Amy Beer is here, ready to hang out with us. Hello, a good evening to you as well, our good friend Amy Beer. The recently married Du Bois, at least one of Du Bois is here. I was saying this all the other night. Du Bois are back in town, and I think that's great. Du Bois are back in town. Uh, Butopia is here. He's getting more cryptic as it goes. Just uh, at this point, it's just letters. Doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, thank you uh, to Kyle for letting me know about this. Uh, Polly B. Wow. 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 Glenn is here for Thirsty Thursday. He is, uh, I think he's ready. I think he's thirsty. He's getting ready, I think, to see the eclipse here soon. He is in the path. In case you're looking to find Glenn, he's in the path of the eclipse. At least one of them. Spoke to Craig first time in five years. Craig is my uncle. I should call him too. I think it's been about 12 years since I've talked to him. Hopefully he's doing well. Um, let's see. Shawnee Panabaker got yelled at on Instagram today for your paper plane. Stop it. Don't let them do that. You send them to me. I'll, I'll, I'll stand up for you. The low carb cocktail guy is here. If you want to see any of these cocktails in the low carb version, pop on over to the low carb cocktail guy. Psyched Mitchell. We got a glug shot. That is exactly right. We got that real close, real uh, real in there shot. Uh, feeling good. Thomas Wire is here. I'm going to make a Madison old fashioned right now. All right, well, okay. Thomas Wire. You know, some people like him, some people don't. I think that's the way to go. Hello, Thomas Wire. Good to see you. Even if you are making a Madison old fashioned, honestly, Canada is a great place. And I think personally, having been to Madison, Wisconsin, I think two times, I think it would do very well in Canada. I think it would do very well. And I think, honestly, the people of Madison would be very excited to move to Canada. Let's get into this cocktail. This cocktail is called the Monkey Glands. 
The name is stupid. The reason it's called the monkey gland is much, much stupider. It was created by a guy named Harry Macaloni or Harry Macalone. He ran Harry's New York bar in a place, this is very confusing, called Paris, France. Okay, that's bizarre that Harry Macalone is out in Paris, France running the New York bar. Well, the New York bar was a style of bar. At that point, it's like the American bar, but it's the New York bar. He was running that. And he created this cocktail after a process created by a guy named Sergei Voronov. Sergei Voronov. Now, what the heck is Sergei doing? Calling something a monkey gland or dealing with monkey glands? Well, Sergei Abramovich uh, Zoranov was a scientist, a surgeon. Some might say. In fact, I think he would say. And he had a plan. He had a thought. He said, with no, with not even thinking about, I mean, not even putting any kind of research to it. He said, huh, hmm, you know, hmm, hmm, you know, if human men had shavings of monkey testicles, grafted onto their own human testicles, I think they would not age. And he looked around for a second and waited for applause. And you know what? The applause came. People said, yes, I like the cut of this guy's jib. I think Sergey, I think Sergey knows what he's talking about. If we just take small shavings of monkey testicles and we graft them on to the testicles of human men, then we wouldn't age anymore. In fact, Sergey postulated, we might age in reverse. He waited around. He said that. And what happened? Oh, he said, I think that we might age in reverse. People freaking loved it. They loved it. In fact, they loved it so much that he did it 500 times. 500 human males had their uh, testes sliced open so that Sergey, who th this surgery had become so popular that he actually had to start a monkey farm. He started a farm of monkeys in order to grow the amount of monkey testicles needed to keep up with the demands of taking thin slices of monkey testicles and attaching them to male testicles. <laughs> 500 people did this, including his brother, George. Anyway, eventually... <laughs> eventually what happens people tell him stop it honestly stop it uh by the end of his life people had realized that not only does this thing hurt i mean please keep everything away from that area if you could uh everything sharp at least uh at the end of his life people realized that he had not proven at one time not even once had he shown that this ridiculous surgery for which you need Willing human men to have their testes operated on in order to graft them on. He also needed a whole farm full of monkeys to get this done. Oh, men, we're so silly, right? Oh, silly men. About midway through this, he started doing it to women, too. He started having monkey ovarian uh, slices thrown onto women's ovaries. So don't just blame men on this one. This whole thing was a mess. I don't know who this guy... I don't know who this guy was, but clearly he was a talker. Clearly a guy that could convince you of almost anything. Let me just say real quick. He also did it in reverse one time where he took uh, uh, human ovaries, put them inside of a monkey. And then... And this is, this is a tough sentence to read. Tried to inseminate the monkey. How did he try and inseminate it? I could not find that story without going into very deep, dark parts of the internet that I was not prepared to go on to. So, anyway, that is why this cocktail is called the monkey gland. For a guy named Sergi who tried 
to slice dude's balls. That is what we got. So uh, let's get into it. Now, you might be noticing that I'm using a clear glass today. Look how fun uh, this is. But boy, look how beautiful it is right there. Ooh. Ah. I walk into a bar and you won't believe what the bartender was talking about, says Amy. That's, yes. Sorry. I do have to give you the, uh, I wanted to be as, as uh, factful as I possibly could. So. This is a very, very simple cocktail. It is a Prohibition era cocktail, but it did not happen in Prohibition era America. It, it was out in Paris. And not the whole world did not have Prohibition. Just America had Prohibition. So uh, this was created during Prohibition, but not where Prohibition was occurring. Let's get into this cocktail. First of all, we're going to start over here with our bottle of Martin Miller. This is a dry gin. Let me just put it right over here. Oh yes, look, look at that. It's gorgeous. We are going to go ahead and put in two full ounces of some dry gin. A gorgeous shot, my friends. I guess not everybody's into this as I am. Okay. The gin is in there because, listen, gin was popular. Gin was just a popular uh, liquor. There's no real reason beyond that. Uh, we're also going to be throwing in uh, one of these guys. This is an orange. This is an orange from Kyle's Tree. So hopefully we will be able to get everything we need out of it. Um, we're gonna get as uh, we're gonna try and get one ounce of orange out of this, but we want to use this also as the garnish. So I am going to oh maybe we can do it like this. We're gonna take this and we're just gonna slice this as thin, thin slices. We're gonna do thin slices right here, not for grafting of any type, but just so that we can get this really nice, thin, uh, see how little stuff we have right here, but how much of this pith we have, that's what we want. We don't want it to be nice and bouncy and springy. And then we need one ounce of orange juice. Oh, then we gotta go here, there we go. Right there, and dang it. Kyle, I have forgotten all of my squeezers. Would you be a doll and bring in my squeezer? Bring in at least a squeezer. We'll sit here. We'll talk about it. Uh, whether I find a place in this world, I will <laughs> never belong. I, I listen. There is a, uh, we don't all have to be converts to Sergei Abramovich uh, Zoranoff or Zoroff, Zoroff. But we have to understand that people have different thoughts than us. That doesn't mean, though, that we all have to go get monkey testicles grafted to our own testicles. That's not important. Thank you, Kyle. Good to see you, pal. What do you want? You can't. No, I. No, no. You want the orange? What do you? Oh, you want the knife? Huh? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, oh, you want to hold it? Yeah. Here, Kyle just wants to say goodbye to his orange. He's kissing it off screen doesn't do anything for the rest of us but thank you Kyle okay see you pal okay we need let's get this out of here we need one ounce of some orange juice let me just say you're gonna want this thing fresh squeezed all right there's only four ingredients in this and one of them is almost not there so you're gonna want this as fresh squeezed as you possibly can. There we go, okay, can't put that there. I'm learning all the new rules about this camera, where everything goes and all that stuff. Okay, we got this. Now, obviously orange juice is citrus, obviously. It's obviously citrus, but it doesn't have that sourness that normally we get from a citrus from citrus that we would put inside of a uh, of a cocktail. We're talking lemons. We're talking 
we should be talking dogs and doing our task. We're talking lemons, we're talking oranges, we're talking grapefruits, all that stuff. So uh, there is a lot more sweetness to this. So we don't need a ton of sweetener in this cocktail. So when we don't need a ton of sweetener, we want a sweetener that's going to bring something to this, to the flavor. And I have something. Homemade grenadine. Let's put it on beauty cam. Oh my goodness, look at that. Homemade grenadine. That's what you're looking for in this cocktail right now. It's some homemade grenadine. Hopefully, your grenadine has that the tang that grenadine should have. Hopefully, your grenadine has uh, some of that flower water, that orange flower water, or some of that rose water that's going to bring a little bit more floralness to this. That's what we want. Uh, so, uh, homemade grenadine. If you don't have homemade grenadine, then you can't make this cocktail. You can't make this with store-bought grenadine. I'm sorry. It's just, it's not the same thing. You're going to hate this cocktail. Uh, go ahead and uh, grab this. Let me just check my note real quick. Do, do, do. Yeah, that's what I thought. You need one quarter ounce of some homemade grenadine. Back that up a touch. Kind of what you have right now is a, a cocktail that's pretty similar to a like a modern day tequila sunrise. Obviously, gin, so it'd be a gin sunrise, uh, but a nice, a nice version of this. Uh, go ahead and grab some of your. Uh, this right here is called uh, absinthe. <laughs> Forgot all about it. Go ahead and grab some of your absinthe. You need, really, you need one large dash. The absinthe is just here to give you some depth, to just bring a little of that anise in here. We have a lot of sweet going in here, so we need something that's going to sort of uh, bring a different flair. So uh, grab your uh, absinthe. We need one big dash of absinthe. And... There we go. It seems like a different show when I go over here, right? Like, it just seems like maybe that's, and I, I promise, here, watch. You can see that I'm doing this, and I'm doing it here, and I'm doing it here, and I'm doing it here. I promise it's the same show. It's just, boy, it's a different lighting. What we got right here, this monkey gland. Oh, boy, oh, boy. This is the monkey gland. Let's go ahead and put it into one of these uh, cocktail glasses. That is shaped like a boob. Actually, let's put this. Let's do this last. We'll keep that in there. We'll keep it as nice and nice and cold as we can. The one issue that I have with the new camera, and this doesn't matter to you guys, I assume at all. Uh, I can't put my ice holder up here, so we're gonna have to go back to ice trays for a minute until I find a brand new way to do this. So uh, we are going to use a nice big ice here. See if we get a really nice shot of this clunking in. Uh, do it a little higher. We did not. Thought maybe we could get a really nice shot of it. Uh, that. That's like going in for the fountain of youth. Somebody saying, hey, you know, uh, the deal is I can definitely make you age in reverse. And you go in there and by the time you're in the office and they bring in a monkey and then tell you to take your pants off. That's kind of the feeling that this is right here. It's uh, kind of a disappointment. Uh, more than anything, but we'll get over the disappointment. We will get over the disappointment. Go ahead and uh, hit this right here. And so when you are using the Boston shaker, the Boston uh, type of shaker with glass up here and this, just know that the whole thing will not shrink. This is a messier shaker version then the tin version where everything shrinks and creates a real good seal. Uh, this, not quite as much. So make sure you definitely are nice and close. And then we give this a big old shake right in here. Maybe we'll do one down here. There we go. All right. Feeling real good about this one. Let's grab our glass. Throw our glass right here. Put that into the shot. There it is. 
And we are going to slowly, nice and easily, and very cinematically pour this drink into our Marie Antoinette glass. Wash line. Nailed it. Freaking nailed it. And because we uh, have this, the, the, one of the reasons we did this today, uh, this drink today, is because I did want to light an orange on fire on the new beauty cam. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to light an orange on fire, see if we can't make this look really, really pretty. When we light an orange on fire, first of all, we want to take. And a lot of people don't do this for some reason. A lot of people take uh, matches or they just take a torch and just throw the torch on top of it. That's all we want to do. In fact, we want to get right here and we want to light our toothpicks. We're going to light our toothpicks with some, uh, with some flame right here. We want to get our orange right next to our cocktail here, right on top of it like this. And then we want to squeeze as hard as we can. Here we go. Dropped it. And there we have it. You guys can see on this cam right here that that is now, it's got that burnt orange look to it. Uh, let's bring in, let's use all the cams for this. If we bring this guy in right here, we can see that there is some burnt oil right on top of here. That is what we're looking for. We want just a little bit of that a burntness and then we're going to drop this guy right in there and there we have it we have done it we have completed what Sergei Zoranov could not we have an actual rejuvenating monkey gland that we can hold in our hand I, don't, I wouldn't recommend holding the other monkey glands in your hands I don't care how domesticated those uh, monkeys were they're not going to like that uh, we have that here, and hopefully, when we drink this one, it'll lift our spirits and make us feel like we are uh, at least not aging so fast, maybe just aging at a regular speed. Who knows? Uh, cheers to all of you, to uh, Sergey and his insane experiments, and I think more importantly, and let me just say this, to all the monkeys that had to, they weren't getting the anything grafted on them. They weren't aging in any kind of reverse. They were, of course, instead having their testicles sliced open. So, to the monkeys. I think that's really who this is to. Cheers. Quick monkey dance. Um, it's a good cocktail. Important, important, important note for this especially when you're dealing with juices in such large quantities. I know that there are a lot of people that will say, anytime you put a juice in your cocktail, it has to be the freshest thing of all time. Obviously, that is the best practice. Obviously, that's the best practice. That's the best way to do it. If you can do that, great. Do I do that for every cocktail that I make that has uh, juice in it? I, for myself, I do not. I just don't. I, I'll admit it. I just don't. However, especially when you are dealing with a cocktail that has so much juice here, it is two ounces of gin, one full ounce of juice, plus some grenadine, plus a little bit of absinthe. You got to have fresh squeezed as close to being picked off of that tree orange juice as you can. The better you can do there, the better this is going to be. I, for a while, when I was uh, behind the bar uh, in downtown LA, I would make this drink and I would say, this is garbage. This is hot, 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 stinky garbage. Because the orange juice we were bring, uh, bringing in was not good orange juice. It was just like fine orange juice. It was like mimosa orange juice, basically, at, like a, at an all-you-can-eat uh, or an all-you-can-drink brunch kind of orange juice, that kind of thing. Came in a jug, which is fine for a lot of things. It's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. For this, 
cocktail right here and this cocktail right here, it does not work. It does not work. Speaking of this cocktail right here. So anyway, what I'm saying is get the freshest orange juice you can. Now, I do think at least for this one, we should put this on the spinner. This is how I was standing. Just so you guys know, when this is spinning, this is how I'm standing. Oh, oh. I also have this so I can take a picture. So just uh, one second, let me just turn this. Which one just turns it off? Oh, yeah, that's what I want. Let me just get the picture. I can pull something over there. And there it is. It spins. Oh, here we go. I also have a green screen. In case any of you guys want to put this into some sort of movie, we're just going to put a green screen behind it. There we go. That's very nice. Yeah, that'll be cut out and put into a different movie or something. I don't know what I don't know what you guys are going to do about it, but it could get real weird. There we go. All right. That, my friends, is the cocktail. This is the new shot. This is the primary shot. This is still called Beauty Cam. Just so you guys know, uh, my shots, th these are the names of my shots. Uh, this is called Bar Shot. It's called Beauty Cam. This is called GoPro, because it's a GoPro up here. And then this is now called Close Up. We may change it. Um, Oh, let me say hello real quick to our good friend, William Johnson. Gave us a yum. Thanks, pal. Uh, good to see you. Question of the day. But is it good enough for monkey astronauts? Do you think that we should give this to monkey astronauts? I do not. I don't think you should give this drink to monkey astronauts. And I, and I have uh, multiple reasons why. The first reason, I think it's just mocking them. I think it is reminding them of a very, very difficult time in monkey history. Monkey history, if they were writing it down at that time, and I don't know, I haven't, I don't know much about monkeys. Uh, if they're writing it down at the time, I think that the Sergei Zoranov time period where he had farms of monkeys, uh, where he was just growing them for their testicles just to slice them up and put them onto uh, human men, I think that'd be a dark time in monkey history. So I don't think this, I don't think it's good to celebrate this with monkey astronauts. These uh, monkeys have clearly spent at least 12 years in college to be astronauts. You, you got to be a smart person, plus probably a little time in the military, plus, you know, some time flying planes. I wouldn't uh, serve this to them. I think that's, I think that's the main reason. Uh, for that, maybe give them a chimp in space. That's a great cocktail. <sighs> okay, before I forget, don't forget to like and subscribe to this uh, channel uh, through this video or through any other video. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, and share, and help out the channel uh, because, my goodness, the channel needs help. <laughs> oh, boy. So whatever you can do, uh, that'd be helpful. All right. That's what I got. Um, well, I, I, never mind. I was going to ask about Sammy Davis Jr. It seems to be a, a trend going through there, but maybe I maybe... Maybe I don't know what's going on. Um, let me remind you guys that, first of all, DC Debbie Clark, winner of the 2023 Kushtucky Derby, will have one extra week of uh, rain. She will rain for one extra week as the winner of the 2023 Kushtucky Derby because of a wedding I have to go to. I won't be able to do a show on May the 4th or May the 5th or 6th, whatever. I won't be able to do it. So we're going to do it the next week. That's coming up here soon. I will start to send out... Uh, in this next, uh, probably after next weekend, I will start to send out uh, forms for you guys to fill out and tell me which heat and which horse you want for the Kushtucky Derby. Very important that you tell me which horse and which uh, heat that you want. Uh, if you um, can't, if you if you don't send it in early, then we will we'll lose it. Uh, second, uh, we'll be back here. Some other time. We'll be back here on Saturday doing a, a longer show, a longer version show where we will chit chat uh, probably a little bit more. We will uh, either have a guest working on some guests right now uh, or uh, we will do a theme 
and do some cocktails on the thing. So we're coming back here on Saturday and then Tiki Tuesday. And then uh, we'll do Thirsty Thursday a week from now. We, we got a lot going on. We got a lot going on. That is what I have for you guys. As always, it is a pleasure. Let me do it from down here. Let me just take a knee real quick. As always, it is a pleasure hosting this show. And I appreciate you guys showing up. So uh, for the time being, uh, make sure that you're liking and subscribing to this stuff. And make sure that you're sharing it. And how about we see each other some other time. <laughs> yeah. That turned quick. <laughs> Let me uh, remind you guys uh, to always, before you leave somebody, uh, don't do that. Uh, I think some people call it the French goodbye or the Irish goodbye. Always say goodbye. Goodbye. Give me your biggest, strongest, cheapest drink. Bye! Bye! about. No! Sure, why not? I don't, I don't know.